All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is uh, six fifteen, uh, and today is Thursday, October fifth. Uh, meeting of the Brookfield Select Board. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you everybody. Um, announcements today, um, one, this meeting is being recorded. Um, also, can I make an announcement that's not on here? Yes. I just want to remind everyone that the Apple Country Fair is this Saturday. So um, please bring your umbrella and uh, enjoy, enjoy the fair and uh, try not to curse too much at the traffic in the village when it happens. Uh, let's see, uh, Brad, could we get a, a report on the warrants? Yep. Uh, warrants FY24060606A payroll $748. FY 2406A withholding $73.36. FY 2407 accounts payable $67,990.16. FY 2407 payroll $202,518.45. FY 2407 withholding $32,060.57. Thank you, Brad. All right, that brings us to our agenda. The first on the agenda is uh, interviewing a uh, candidate for veteran service officer, Ellen Moore. Um, being the only person I don't know here, Ellen, I'm guessing you are. All right, would you please come up and join us? All right, my lucky me, my first hire as a uh, as a, our first candidate interview as a chair, so please bear with me as I That's okay. work through this. Uh, let's see. Yes, Beth. Just wait. <laughs> Sorry, I, I I see that look on my wife going. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's just me trying to like like deal with the fact that I have to look over the glasses. So oh. there's, there's no no intended body language. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um. So uh, let's see. So, Ellen. I do have a copy of my resume and all of the paperwork. I didn't know if you had copies or if you're all uh, set. Let's see. Yeah. I believe I, I have a copy of your resume. Yep. I, have, I have a copy of some questions for you, and I have a copy of some. Um, Kelly, question for you. Are we looking, I saw some uh, legality around here, around a district. Are we looking to um, form a district of other towns, or are we just looking to coordinate hire, but every town hires uh, the veterans agent directly? Because I that. Okay. All right, so there's no district involved. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, when they did the planning for this, I understand that it's the fact that there's so few um, uh, clients, if you will, um, so they were trying to group the towns together. So mm -hmm. I don't think, I think legally you have to go through the Veterans Association to make it a regional, but mm -hmm. again, I'm not a lawyer or a, <laughs> but. Uh, the important thing is we find a way to serve the veterans. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, gu I guess the first question is why do you want the job? Um, well, for, I've been I spent 24 years in the military, and then the next seven as a um, DOD employee at Westover Air Reserve Base, and. I did, <clears throat> excuse me, this is what I did for the best part of the 24 years in the military, only for a a active members. So, you no, know, everybody likes to retire and take their money and run, which I did, um, but I wanted to find something to keep me young and active, if mm -hmm. you will, and I found it very fitting. I have a friend, uh, Holly, um, uh, Kalarski, who's the veteran services officer up in North Brookfield. Mm -hmm. So she came to one of the retirement dinners we got talking, and uh, and the uh, veteran services officer for the town of Chicopee. He was my first sergeant at one point. So the two of them, uh, the three of us, got talking, and I feel that it's a great fit for me to continue doing what I did for the last 31 years. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds like, and I'll take the second question if you don't mind, Tom. No, go ahead. 
So it sounds like, um, and as, as I'm reading through this it, uh, with your resume, it, um, what period of time are you, are you referencing that, that kind of aligns on similar like to the veterans benefits and services work? Because it sounds like you're, you're saying that a lot of the work that you were doing for active duty Correct. was, or for so, the reservists on the Right, so what my job was whether it be the administrative part or the um, civil engineering operations, um, my responsibilities were to prepare the reservists in every aspect, whether it be their medical records, whether it be their financial records, whether it be supporting their families when they're gone, all of those things, that's what I did 24-7. <laughs> and I mean literally 24-7. Um, and. Uh, their training records, um, uh, just making sure that they were always ready, prepared, and secured when they went out, when they came back. Okay, great. And uh, and my understanding is that there's training that's specific to this work, so and you're going to be available to attend. Yes, training. I've already discussed that with Gary. Matter of fact, Monday or Tuesday, okay. um, he, we're going to set it up where I sit with him. Um, just to get to know the clients, um, the veterans, the um, understand the program and what have you. And I'm willing to go at, at no expense t to any type of training so that I'm ready the day Gary um, retires. Um, like I said, if, it, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be volunteering for Project New Hope or one of those organizations so I could keep doing the same thing. So I have no problem with And in my administrative position, I worked with computer programs that were military specific. So I did take a look at Gary's. I think I was here. Somebody, I was yeah. here. Um, with Gary and going looking at the program and it seems very simple. The only thing that issue that I ran into or whatever is knowing the um, process of how you your people in, reimburse mm -hmm. um, or that type of situation where we, I have to submit to the state. Yeah, so there's there's a whole like series of, of documentation right. and paperwork because there's there's two ends of the finance when Correct. you're de dealing with veterans agent yeah. for the local communities. There's the submitting the vouchers that you need for the treasurer and, and the accountant to cut the check. And then there's mm -hmm. the other half of it to for make sure that you to get file back. all the proper paperwork. So what you winds up reimbursed. happening is, is in the follow-on year from a municipal finance perspective, like we allocate the funds and then we get a reimbursement Reimburse. the following year basically. Right, so he wasn't able to show me that. That was the only part that I didn't understand or didn't have a chance to yeah. Um, review, but right, and that's something the town accountant can help with as well because they're part of that whole process and filing that paperwork. At the yeah, end of the year. in in the in the my last seven years, I was the financial officer for my uh, unit, uh, my group, I should say, um, directly with the group commander. Um, so I kn I had to take fiscal law um, and a lot of the financial. Uh, type of training. C right, CBTs we call them, right. computer-based trainings or whatever. So I have a, a good idea of funding processes, Great. whether it be Congress or... Or, or local state. Right. Got it. <laughs> awesome. All right, and then let's see. So you understand you'll need to meet with the individual veterans Yep. Okay. And is that something you've done? And is that something you've done before, or? Well, just, I dealt yeah. with the active duty members, okay. or the active members, I should say, the active members, um, one on one, whether it be to to help them with their financial, their educational benefits, mm -hmm. their um, uh, training records, what have you, their medical records. So, I've been one on one with the reservists on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So it'd be just, like I said, picking up where. Where you left off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you comfortable leading veterans' observances? Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. But that was a big part of the activity that we did at Westover, whatever it be. Um, Veterans Day ceremonies, that what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Veterans Day exactly. ceremonies, parades, mm -hmm. uh, and that type, type of activity, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the biggest veterans-oriented observers in town, is, I think we have, is on Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. But that means we have scope for others. Right. But working with the three towns, how do you determine which event would be re requiring my... So typically our cultural council manages most of the Memorial Day observances, but where you could really help us out is I think we've done a poor job historically uh, doing outreach to get veteran participation in the Memorial Day observances. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it would be is once you connect with the community, seeing what you can do to convince folks to, to, to come out and, and represent mm -hmm. fundamentally. Yeah. More so than, you know, marching in the parade is yep. more that kind of making certain that people feel comfortable, that, yep. that they, they're truly wanted and that, that it, it really is in, in, in place for them to recognize the folks that, that they served with that, you know, may, may not have made it back, yeah. so. Well, I belong to the um, uh, American Legion. I, I am transferring from my post in Springfield to the post at, uh, in North Brookfield. I just haven't been able to catch the commander of right. it, <laughs> tie him down to, to uh, hand him over the paperwork. But um, uh, other than that, I do plan on transferring. And once you're a member of one, community. you can go to, you're welcome at all. So I could encourage and. Through that. Yeah. Yes. That'd yeah. be great. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we did do uh, an event for the um, a national night out in North Brookfield. And I uh, assisted Holly while, I, while she was um, uh, recruiting, if you will. And while we were there, we recruited two people that didn't know that they, she was the veteran services officer and that they were um, eligible. Uh, yeah. 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 So. So, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I read the, Can I, go? I don't really have any. Make a motion that we uh, uh, appoint Ellen T. Moore as our veterans agent. Second. Is, uh, okay. Um, is that an indefinite appointment or is this position a, is there, d does it require reappointment or is it until the board decides otherwise? Just. So historically, when there has been a veteran services officer, the town is typically so grateful until. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. You get your hands on the right. that, and, that's, and that's fine. I, I think we have a good one too. I just want to understand. Well, so if you want to make it a three-way appointment, you want to just make it higher, or make it a one-year appointment, basically it's, it's open. Okay. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ye
I'd need space to talk because sometimes they might not want anyone to know that they're struggling financially. Mm -hmm. So if they needed heat assistance or anything, so, yes. but um, I, I, I'd be able to judge on the most part what I could or couldn't release. Mm -hmm. um, but comfort, confidentiality is important whether it be for their self-esteem or self, um, yeah, but also, their right, and also, but also letting you know that if there was any type of issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm good. So, all in favor of hiring Ellen as the veterans agent, please say aye. 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 Oh, award. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Gary's oh. on till um, November first, I believe. Yeah, it should be effective. Yes, I, so, I, I'm sorry. Gary, Gary, yeah, I, I apologize. No, I forgot. Yeah, Gary was, Do I need to amend it? I can. I can we can. Yeah. We, let's amend. So we can't amend it because we already voted it. But can, can we vote to clarify that it was? Okay, let me make. It, let me make a motion to rescind the original vote. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All in favor of re, of, re, of uh, rescinding the original vote for uh, purpose of correction, say aye. 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 And then uh, let's get a new motion that's uh, to appoint uh, Ellen Moore as the uh, Veterans uh, Services Agent as of uh, one November, effective 1 November 2023. Second. All right. All in favor of that latest motion say aye. 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 All right. And I, under I understand that uh, Gary is, um, uh, has identified some training sometime in October. It sounds like it's in-person training. Yeah. And so I think that's important. I think Gary was saying that affects our reimbursement rate. Yep. Yes. Issues, so. Right. Yep. Are you already scheduled to do that since you've already been um, hired by I, Westbrookfield? Um, I haven't because Ron was looking into some of his uh, must sees, and I I went to Ireland mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. Okay. So <laughs> so, and that was all I was thinking about for the last <laughs> month. So, um, but I was to get together with everybody once these decisions were made and and set up anything and everything that they need because I also have to do paperwork for um, th tax purposes, what have you, town administration, yes. um, yeah, no, the, the right, the, right. So, yep. so once I had the go for all three towns. You don't need to go for all three. You're being hired individually, individually. by each town. Okay, so Ron. So you can start with Ron as soon as you and Ron have time to do it. You can start with us. As okay. As and so would I deal with you in the paperwork end? It or? would be the treasurer. Okay. Um, her name is Amy. Amy? She's here Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5. Okay. But I could look that up online <coughs> mm -hmm. when she's available and phone, mm -hmm. make an appointment with her. Okay. Mm -hmm. If there's anything else, you have my phone number. I believe it's on there. Yep. Um, my address is not correct on here because um, I was sending these all out before I moved. Mm -hmm. I um, I moved to North Brookfield. I live on Summit Street. Uh, Summit oh, Terrace. That's what's here. Oh. We got the correct one. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, all thank right. you very much. Right. Everybody you, have a nice evening. All right, thank you. Stay safe. Thank right. you. Uh, next on the agenda is the uh, is Don Taft with the uh, Wills High Water Wake, No Wake on South Pond, and then also the Pine Lane Skating Rink and the <coughs> Allen Treatment Update. So let's take those in order, Don. How are you doing today? Yep, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So I, I didn't think we'd have high water again before we had a chance to discuss this. Uh, I know that, <laughs> but, but we have. Yes. Uh, so I know that Kelly is working with the state to get the Attorney General to approve the bylaw. It's actually the Mass Environmental Police. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. So that's a, that's a different process. I'll, you know, I don't have any questions with that. What, what I wanted to do was kind of the mechanics. Um, to start with, I, the town has the bylaw at 601 feet, mm -hmm. but it's never been identified. So it needs to be surveyed, it should be marked. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I went down yesterday and marked it uh, with a spray can, 
it's proximate, it's not surveyed in, mm -hmm. but I marked it as at the high water marks at both uh, boat ramps and the water was uh, at the edge of Quaybog Street, which I think is probably what established the 601 feet. So anyway, if you go down there, there are, there are two marks on each ramp mm -hmm. at approximately that location. Yeah, one ramp on each pond, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. But uh, so there's a couple of things that I, I think need to be kind of ironed out and I can talk with Kelly or we can uh, work some, something out. Uh, the Lake Association is more than willing to help monitor this or let you know what water levels are because we monitor that on a regular basis anyway. And we also have um, probably about a 15 year uh, history of knowing uh, when you get an inch of rain how long it's going to take that to re reflect in the water level of both lakes. So we'll be glad to work with that uh, and let you know. It's kind of the process of who do we notify, how do you want us to notify it, and again I can, I can work that out with Kelly. Um, but that's some of the, the mechanics of um, how the process is going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and how I question how the town will notify the public or the state or boaters. Now on Sunday, uh, Saturday, when the water level rose to 601 feet, there were 17 boats, uh, trailers, in the boat ramp uh, um, between the two points. So a total of about 17. And two more arrived while I was leaving. So. I don't know how those people will be notified um, of, a, of a high water, no wake situation, or who will enforce it. But that's part of the agreement with, with the state. But mm -hmm. uh, are we allowed to put like a barrier, like a temporary barrier? That's that I would I would guess that you probably can, but that's something that you would have to uh, be sure that is approval approval by the state that you can mm -hmm. you can mark it. That that's part of that agreement. Uh, so, however, that works. Well, and I and I have a couple of questions. I mean, it's not the problem isn't necessarily that people are using the lake during high water periods. It's their behavior when they're using it and making sure they're aware that the rules are in effect. Correct. In any any when the water gets a six oh like like many of the docks right now, and we're slightly below the six oh one high water. Mark, uh, I'm going to say that most of the docks are underwater, uh, and and so when you have a wake, uh, it's disrupting private property, it's damaging the docks, and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's and it everybody needs to know. I mean, we let the Lake Association people know, but we don't have a mechanism for notifying you know, the people that are arriving at, to use the, the lake on a, on a day use basis. Or a fishing club, uh, like if there's a special use permit, they probably ought to be notified that it's a no wake situation as well. That's kind of the, kind of the mechanisms that I think we need to look are, at to put in place. Are we allowed to have like movable sign, as part of the agreement, I, I think we're allowed to put some signage up. So I mean, we could put like a flip sign that indicates the conditions put a lock on it and you know kind of like the chief's got Didn't his the state come and take down the fire. signs last time? I'm sorry? I thought the state came and took down the signs. So what happened was uh, I think it was July 3rd and I went down and I posted that there was they're just eight and a half by eleven orange signs at high wake uh, high water no wake. Uh, the state found out about it, and that's when they said, well, we're the only ones that can do that. You can't do that. So that's why this okay. time, okay. this time I did nothing. I, I mean, I sent you an email to let you know that the mm -hmm. situation had occurred, but uh, I didn't, I didn't post, I didn't post anything. Uh, so. Kelly, what are we coordinating with the DEP? Because we, we already have the bylaw. On the books. So any bylaw that affects or impacts a great pond, and this mm -hmm. is a great pond, has to be brought before a town meeting 
certified vote mm -hmm. has to be approved by the Attorney General, but it does not take effect until the Chief of the Massachusetts Environmental Police approves it. Okay, and we are- Our bylaw has been sitting with the Environmental Police for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't, I was only made aware that this hadn't been done recently, so mm -hmm. as soon as I got the information, I got the documents and sent it in. And I emailed them like two or three times now asking where we were with it and have not received a response. So. Mm -hmm. okay. But until that process is completed, the bylaw technically is not doesn't legitimate. Have teeth. It doesn't have any teeth. It's not legitimate bylaw because it, it, the, the yeah, it's, to the state. It, yeah, it's it's a it has no effect until it finishes the approval process, and it and when the chief of the state environmental police approves it, then it's done, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And does that have to be done? Is our bylaw contingent on the other towns completing that process also? Or they is haven't it, answered me, so I reached out to Stroud Danny Sparkfield, who have parallel bylaws. Mm -hmm. I was able to get a copy of the certified vote in the Attorney General's letter approving it from East Brookfield. Mm -hmm. I have not been able to get that from Sturbridge, however, um, and I sent East Brookfields in, um, but again, we haven't heard anything yeah, back. And so, Stur so Sturbridge is. I don't know there. if they're waiting because they want all three of the towns to be zero mm -hmm. by the same way. I haven't heard back. I don't know. I get. I guess. Okay. Uh, I was trying to ask a slightly different question, and that is, if the if the state approves ours, then are we? It's like, are we able to enforce it even though the other towns don't have theirs approved yet? So, because it's a great pond, I do not know who has enforcement authority. You may have a bylaw, but it may be the environmental police who enforce it. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Right. So we'll need to. So there, there's enforcement, and then separate from that is the um, the signage, the, re the request for signage at the ramps, mm -hmm. and that and I would say that we can talk about what we want to do, but we're not going to be. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything unless there is a an approved bylaw that is relevant to the signage. In that until until they approve the bylaw, and there's a bylaw saying no wake at when the water level gets 601. There's, the state's going to say you can't put a sign up because there's no rule against it, is my expectation. So it, se it seems to me that we can, we can discuss what we want to do and we can look into making arrangements to what we, uh, how we want to do it. But until there's a bylaw that we can say we need a sign because there, it's like until there is an effective bylaw, we're stuck at the, we want to sign. Why? You don't have a bylaw. And that's what we're going to get back from the state. Right. And so, but I, I think that, uh, speaking for myself, I think that, yeah, having something like a, a surveyed marking to assist us in making the determination that the water is high enough that the bylaw is triggered, and then having signage at the boat ramps to assist people in helping them understand that there is a bylaw and that it is in effect is going to be is a good thing uh, it's not going to be a lot of money and it's going to be helpful to the property of, of the residents of all the towns around the ponds yep so i think we're waiting um i would encourage you to um to think through how we, it's like identify surveyors and how you're going to get that marked so that we uh, can have a clear indication of when the well i i wouldn't out. i wouldn't i mean i i could have it surveyed but <laughs> since it's a town bylaw i think the town should do the survey but if if you want if you want it surveyed i can get it surveyed mm -hmm. okay uh, we can we can we can talk about that and then and then getting the signage in Okay. Well, actually getting an agreement from the DEP to not take your signage down if we get the yes. signage well, in. Well, well, I, and that's why I'm saying it's like we can talk about what we want to do, but we're not doing anything until there's a, a real bylaw that the signs can reference. At which point then we talk to the state about, yeah, we, want to, we have a bylaw, we want to put these signs in. Are you, let's, let's get you to the point where you're not going to rip them down before we put them in. So 
I think I think we can we can plan, but until the state DEP approves the bylaw, it's I don't think there's much we can do at this point. Right. From 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 a I will activity. I will write up some suggested procedures that I would and submit them to Kelly mm -hmm. so that we have some draft at least in place so that we can talk about that once the bylaw is officiated by the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So so the second topic is um, the skating rink on Pine Lane, mm -hmm. the roller skating rink, which is town property. It is the only remaining building on part of, as part of the campground. Can we hit pause on that for just a second? I'm sorry? I just want to hit pause on that for just a second. Yep. Do, did we actually get that through the land court? Because I thought that that one was still hung up in land court somehow. Yeah, or is I, it actually I, our property? I thought we were still in progress on that one also. So that was my So I, I'll have to double check. We're, we're gonna, and, 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 I, and the only reason why I'm saying pause is because I'm not 100% certain. I could have sworn that that was the one like defective property with regards to the documentation when all of that stuff went through land court. Okay. My, under, my understanding is that there is property there that the town has not completed its taking of, because I remember when we had that discussion about um, vehicles being stored on that land, yep. that it was on the land that the town didn't own and therefore it limited our ability right. to take action. But, but the building might actually be on property that we own, but the space they were parking might not. So right. we probably I'm, need to get that clarified. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with that area, so I don't know. Yeah. So, we can, so, we can, so we can go ahead with the, uh, on the presumption that we own it, but with the understanding that if the town is not, doesn't own that property, there's not much we can do at this point. Okay. But fair enough. Whoever owns it, mm -hmm. there's a liability there. Mm -hmm. um, I took some pictures today. Um, there's, there's several, a couple from the outside and some from the inside. All of the windows are broken, the roof is leaking, the floor is collapsed. It's all overgrown. It, it's a liability, and if we have suggested um, that some of our residents who had decaying property put fences around it, then I think if this is town property, we ought to do the same, mm -hmm. uh, both for the protection of the town and for the safety of the kids that are getting in there. You can see that they're in there and there's graffiti in the building. I mean, obviously they're in and out of there all the time, mm -hmm. or as frequently. They're kids. So, yeah, I know it. Um, and they shouldn't be, but they are, just like, yeah. like they did that. Too. But it is very dangerous. I mean, the floor is rotted. Um, there's a balcony that's out over the water. If a kid falls off, there's a, there's a concrete head wall right there, um, you know. And I'm just suggesting that I thought the town owned it. If the town does in fact own it, I think we have a re the town has a responsibility to secure it or something to, to mm -hmm. take care of the and, liability. And is to address the safety issues there, yes. whether it's by putting a fence up or by knocking it down or something else. Right. But safety is the, is the concern. Yep. Do they still have a, a tear down program from the state? Because we took advantage of that a couple, three times. That's, that's what I was Googling in it, in case anybody's wondering what I was doing on my phone. Um, that might help us get some funding to just tear it down. But in the interim, I think we need to identify, are we actually the owners? And if we are the owners, we may need to look at getting somebody in to, to do the fencing. I'm not quite sure what budget that would come out of, though. Yeah. Can we keep these? Sure. Yeah, put, put these into the meeting record. Um, Kelly, do you so, have any recommendations of, of what we could legally use in terms of if we were going to try to secure that property? If we don't own it? No, if we do own it. Well, I would suggest you start by putting a fence because the carry down would have to go through the control Right. No, I understand that. Yeah, but I'm, no, I'm thinking about the funding it. even for the, set, for the fence. I'm thinking about funding. Um, I would have to look at the different budgets and see where it would fall under. Because if we own it, it might fall under 
still be needed. Mm. Okay. Um, we have, I know that there is a line item in the budget for Taking down buildings, I think it's $2,900 or something. Left over from, um, I think it was from uh, doing it as a warrant article yeah, a couple years back. Article. I don't know if we moved into the recent. Um, it, it, it's been sitting for so long, I don't know if we rolled it or if the accountant rolled it into the cash or if it's still sitting. I don't know if it was an operational budget or if it was a. a I don't think it, well, it would have been a warrant so article. It's, it's not on the op budget. Okay. So I think at this point the the action plan is uh, to determine the own, to confirm the ownership of the building, whether it's the town's or not. And so um, I think we should uh, put this on the agenda for our next meeting, where we can either um, confirm that the town doesn't own it, and therefore our options are limited. We can pursue the actual building owner, which I don't think is going to get very far, since I. Or if it's the towns, we can then discuss um, what steps we want to take in order to secure the, the site and, Great. and protect people. Yep, sounds good to make, me. Does that make sense? And I don't think we need a vote for that. Okay. Since we're just planning to talk again later. Okay. okay. So the last item was a, a kind of an unofficial update in reference to the alum treatment, which was done um, in June. Um, most of you know, I think you probably do, that, that the town contributed to the, to the funds to the, having that 319 grant uh, put in place. Um, so what it was, what the Allen treatment was, uh, was to sequester the phosphorus in, in the water. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ways you determine how effective that treatment was is by checking the clarity or the turbidity of the water. Just prior to the uh, treatment, the Lake Association did a series of Secchi disc readings, which is a disc that you use to determine clarity. Um, and the reading that we got, the best reading we got was um, 2.1 meters, which is just over six feet. Um, about a month ago, we did another Secchi disc, a follow-up Secchi disc, and it's 5.2 meters. Mm -hmm. So it has been a very significant uh, improvement in water clarity. And um, I talked with Becky at the conservation in Sturbridge today to see if they had an idea of when they would be getting the final report from either ESS, who was the engineer that orchestrated, or from Mass. DEP with the 319 grant and she said she was hoping they were hoping to get it within a couple of weeks so with that report you should get a uh, all of the technical data and the the chemistry of of the in the final report but I just wanted to touch base I sent you a quick little note just to let you know where what the effect was and um, that there should be a report coming through All right. Well, I'm, I'm I'm speaking for myself. I'm glad to hear that it uh, has had a beneficial effect. Yeah. And it sounds like that's good for the health of the pond. It's good for the health of the pond. It's good for the uh, for the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it yeah. keeps your property tax up. And mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. All thank right. You. Thank you, Don. All right, James. You have yes, a uh, you have a bylaw recommendation or proposal. Yes. And hopefully it's in your packet, otherwise I have a couple yes. copies. I do, I do have a copy. There we go. If not, I have a couple of spares. Okay. So a little bit of background. You already have a bylaw in the books which basically states that if you want to have a parade in town, you need the written permission of the selectmen, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you gave from the other day when we had a parade. Um, what I'm suggesting is that um, we expand that, upgrade it, so any event, you know, bike a marathon, bike race, would now require the you know, approval from the Board of Selectmen to hold it. And there are also some teeth in law. For example, there's no penalty right now on the bylaw. Mm -hmm. So if I were to hold a parade, well, so what? <laughs> okay. Okay? So basically, this is what I propose. I would ask that you would 
consider putting this on the next town meeting, otherwise I can raise signatures for the spring, but I, given how hectic the spring meeting is, I think it's best to discuss stuff like this at the, at the fall meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's a reason why I came up with this. And I don't know if any of you were aware, but back in August there was a bike race on Rice Corner Road. Are you aware of that? I'm on what date? I don't know the exact. It was the middle of August. Okay. What well, was it? Uh, was it the uh, was it the uh, charity ride out of Oakville on the twenty twentieth? I believe. I, think, I believe it was organized out of Sturbridge. They're going to Highland. Oh, okay. I know there's something out of Oakland in, in August. Um, I was away that day, but I don't know of anything out of Highland. Okay. Okay. So, in either case, if, if you know Rice Corner Road, it's a narrow road. It goes up and down. It's you know a lot of blind spots. So I'm going down this, and, the, and there's bicyclists in the middle of the road. I had to go around them. Another car was coming on. I could have been hit in a head-on collision. Mm -hmm. So it's tough enough on Rice Corner Road when there's one or two bicyclists going down the road to get around them. Um, so there's a public safety issue, and certainly if someone's going to run a bike race, they should get permission from the board of selectmen. I would think. Anyway, that's what caused me to think about it. If you're gonna do it for something like that, in looking over the current bylaw, I thought it just needs to be upgraded for any use of the public roadway for any event, any kind. Should come before the board and get their permission. And this also provides that, you know, if you wanna impose some like requirements, like you pay for a police detail, that should be part of it too. Mm -hmm. So any questions as to why? So I think the only, I have a, I have a couple of, I don't know if it's questions or comments. Um, I know that prior years for that same race, they did come to the Board of Selectmen. Did we not get a request? I, I know, but I do, I do remember in the past, I believe we, we did, and it went to the police chief, too. Right. So, so there's aspects of this that, do you want me to make a motion so we can, for discussion, regarding whether to place this or not? Um. Or do you want to just discuss first? Yeah, we, can, we can discuss first. I don't think we need a motion. So, I mean, from a standpoint of if the primary concern is the controls and the teeth, right, I, I'm somewhat of the opinion that, you know, the first line is, our, is essentially what we already have on the books. The last line is providing teeth, though anything that's in the bylaw, obviously, I think it's what is the maximum fine is like $200, which we need to upgrade our bylaw in general to potentially allow for more teeth. I think, you have a, um, I think there's a blanket statement in our bylaw that any violation is a, can be a fine of up to $200. This would exceed that, so if we were gonna go that direction, we'd need to upgrade that to whatever threshold would be appropriate. I think the only piece of this that I find a little, I think overzealous in our regulation is the public hearing for each and every parade or event that we're gonna hold in town. I think that that's maybe not appropriate. What if it's just passing through town? It's not even happening. Yeah. I mean, I, this was just passing through, or was it? Well, if it was big. Did it end here? If, I mean, obviously, it was a safety issue. It was a safety factor. But do you, how, how do you notice the, the surrounding towns that if an event is happening in their town, they need permission to go through our town? Can you limit road use that way? That's something to look at. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We may be, absolutely be able to do yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say that we're not able to control someone running an event in another town, but we're able to, we have the right to regulate the use of the, the roadways in our town. Yeah. And I would say that it would be, it's not so much the nature of the event, it's that the event, that the event occurs in such a way to create a safety hazard. Right. So, and, so to and, me, a, a, a charity ride where everyone's kind of tooting along, it, it, it's, in this it's, it's not a race context here, but everyone's out doing it, they paid, a hundred bucks to to do a ride and then they get two beers at the end and there's a whole bunch of kumbaya cam camaraderie. It's like, I've done those before, they're a lot of fun. And then when people do that, there's no race and so everyone's like, sometimes they'll ride side by side, when a car comes, everyone slide, tries to slide in single file, lift the car by. To my mind, a race is something someone doesn't want to lose. And in a race, they're much more likely to be aggressive in their use of the road in order to maintain position. So to me, my thought is that the focus here should be on 
unsafe usage of the roads or usage of the roads that creates unsafe conditions. Um, I'm also a little bit concerned of including but not limited to. It's like that's. This is very, very broad. Yeah, and, and, and the broadness concerns me. I, and so. Any use for any event. Yeah. I, I, again, in looking, thinking about this, I mean, we can't look. 50 years from now, they may have a Google car race, okay? That's the use of a public roadway. I think you gotta look out ahead if you pass a bylaw. I mean, there are certain things that are in development, for example, self-driving cars. But if, but if the event doesn't cause a safety hazard, what is the problem? Why is it? Well, it's also an inconvenience to the to residents, and you should probably solicit their input. I mean, you're, there are two issues. Race Corner Road, is, to me, is if, not a place. That, if you want to have a road people, race, go down. If, if, if when we get motorcycle rides to keep through here all the time, and there's a big flight of motorcycles can come through here, and yeah, it's inconvenient if you want to turn out through them, or it's inconvenient if you get stuck behind them, but it's a public road. We can't limit them because we don't like that they're riding so, together. So, I don't so can, I, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Let's take this under advisement. Let's do a little bit of research. Let's figure out kind of what do a little oh, bit of calibration, you know. Mm -hmm. do, well, do a couple of things, right? Figure out what's already on the books for the state, mm -hmm. what's already on the books for us, what's on the books in some of the neighboring communities, and come back in like a month and talk about the what we think would be an appropriate adjustment to our existing bylaw. Yeah, I mean, I would say I think we do have some teeth. I reached out to Chief Blanchard when I, I, Mr. Cook's request first came to us, just to understand what our current situation was, and. I have to. I don't have time. To, I don't want to look it up right now. But my recollection is that it was. Um, he said we did have the ability to to find someone who was having an an unauthorized parade. Right. And I and to my mind that's creating safety hazard. Not a, he's not talking about parades. You already have. Parades. Yeah, you already have that in your yeah. bylaw. Right. There's no. So yeah, you can find. No, but I thought he said we didn't have it. I thought parade. Mr. Cook said we didn't have a bylaw. We have a bylaw, but it only covers parades. Oh, it's, it's yes. lim that's why mine is right. limited mirror uh, parade. I miss her. Okay, so, I should have so, brought the old bylaw. In. So, I, so I think that's I think that's what we do. Is I think we take this, we do a little side by side compare. We take it under advisement. We may come up with some modified text, and we can put it back on an agenda, and then have the discussion about what we're willing to support putting on the the warrant, if if anything. Yeah, I think that's I, I, I think that's reasonable. I, I don't think, especially with it coming into winter, I don't think there's going to be. It's, it's like <laughs> our, our, our risk of an event in the next like four weeks is relatively low. Dog sled race. Right? Deal. <laughs> you know, if they need, if they're having dog sled races on the road, we're going to have to talk to the highway department. <laughs> okay, I want to bring up one other item while I have your ear. Uh, it, it has to be on the agenda. And, uh, oh. Open meeting law. We can't violate open meeting Well, wait a minute. I could suggest that you can table. I know for the open meeting. If I raise something, you can table it. You can't discuss you, you it. You can suggest something for another meeting. You okay, can, let me suggest can... something for another meeting. Okay. Okay. FYI, in case you didn't see it, the state has awarded $100 million to create a passenger rail track from Springfield to Worcester. I would suggest the town raise its hand about putting a passenger station in. And if you want to discuss it, I'd be glad to come back. You can put it on the agenda. Thank you. That's it. That's I know, Dan, did you see that? Are you aware of this? $110 million. That federal infrastructure bill. Okay. Um, Karen, can we put a placeholder for this on the November 2nd, or the first meeting in November? Thank you. All right, that brings us on to our next one, resignation of the highway superintendent. So, Ryan has submitted his notice. Uh, we have the, uh, and so now we have a highway, to, we, uh, we are about to be at a highway department of one. So in light of so, what's occurred, is that all right if I recuse myself from this? Um, yes, yes. You can recuse yourself from anything that you hear. Do yes. Um, right. um, does now uh, just a question is it necessary for Brad to recuse himself for us to plan for the next highway superintendent or is that 
Please repeat your question. Um, does Brad, is, is it necessary or appropriate for Brad, or is it necessary or reasonable for Brad to, to recuse himself when we are talking about uh, uh, replacing Ryan? Or does he only, is he only um, does he only need to recuse himself when we talk about how we're handling Ryan's transition out? I'm not to recuse myself from the selection process. Does he have to? Okay, no, no, no. It's, it's, I'm, I'm more asking, is it, would it be reasonable? I'm trying to understand. It's like, I understand, I understand perfectly why Brad would want to and why it makes sense for him to recuse himself from um, discussing um, the, uh, the Ryan's transition out of the town. But once, when we talk about rep um, finding a new highway superintendent, it's like, does Brad need to be recu recuse himself from that part of the conversation? It's entirely Brad's choice. Okay, I, all right, that's fine. And if you ask. Point of order, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, yes, Point of order, what is the purpose of Brad stepping down? Can you make that very clear? Um, you mean uh, why, why Brad's recusal of himself from the discussion? Stepping down, we could, yeah, same thing. Uh, yeah. Let's see, yeah, I believe he feels that I. At the risk of speaking for Ms. Skidelsky, uh, because uh, he has a complaint against Ryan, he feels that it's best that he not be involved in discussion involving the highway superintendent position. That isn't why he stepped down. It had nothing to do with it. No, 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 no. Brad has recused himself. Are you asking why, why Ryan resigned? No, I'm asking why he's excusing himself from, the, from this policy of what you're going to discuss. Um, I, he can Brad? recuse himself for any reason that he chooses. Yep. No, I'm just wondering what the reason was, that's all. Okay. It's, so you I, I've told you what I I told you what I think his reason is. Um he can speak for himself if he wants to, but because. not right now. At least let's uh, let's let's focus let's focus on the board because. business here. So so, so. I, I do wanna talk about something in the context of like thinking strategically and some of the other challenges that have been before us is that I do have a question as to whether we should be talking about just replacing the highway superintendent or given the issues that we have potentially with staffing around the water department, is, is this potentially an opportunity to move to, and it would be more expensive, so it's, it needs to be a, a consideration and, and because we're at a point where right now we don't have a town meeting to do this restructure, it may be even hairier. Okay, let me just put all of that out there. Um, but at one point, probably four or five years ago, we talked about moving to a construct where we had a director of public works who held a water license as well as a water superintendent so that that would get us to the two full-time people that had that capability. Mm -hmm. Or make it a requirement when we do the highway superintendent job that they be willing to pursue certification relative to the water department as a sec additional duty as the highway superintendent. So I know that may not necessarily be typical, but is, is that something that we could at least explore in the context structurally um, of, of what we're doing here? I, I definitely think it there's exploration. My my gut reaction is that is that is I'm concerned about the cost of having two licensed water operators on the books. But my thought is let's but that I don't think so that's concern, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't ex examine it. I mean we do it we I mean we, we do have the water department coming back in two weeks with some of their ideas for a secondary operator. Okay. And it does make sense if there is a if there is some transition here. It does make sense to say, okay, um, since things are in flux, do we want to settle them back down the way they were, or do we take advantage of the flux, or do we yeah. say there is some flux, and do we want to settle things down in a different configuration? Yeah, but the challenge is that if we're changing the configuration, even as I opened my mouth, I knew I was going to trip over it. Is the fact that if it's if it's not in our personnel bylaws position we can't do it 
You have a highway superintendent who reports directly to the Board of Selectmen. You have a water superintendent who directly reports to a different elected board. board. This is a massive restructure. If it's something you want to do, it needs to be explored thoroughly and get the support of just not only the departments, but the residents. And it needs to be done through the town meeting and election process. Yeah. So that's structured properly. So if you do this, this is down the road. Yeah, okay. You can start that's fine, but we can start thinking about it. That, right. But okay. it is not, it's that's, not that's the legit. Solution. Okay, that's legit. And, I, and even as I opened my mouth to say it, I realized that it's not something we could do in essence in this in this process, but it's something that I think in the context yeah. of this process we need to talk about. I mean, I, I think that we are going to, I mean, we're going into plowing season, we're going to need a, a superintendent in there sooner or someone in position to uh, to supervise those things, yep. the, the operation of that department. I mean, some of the outside active. Work, I believe some of the outside their outside active work goes down, and a lot of their work in the winter is more maintenance oriented. Mm -hmm. So, but fundamentally, it's uh, okay. So anyway, so after we digressed, my apologies. Mm -hmm. So what are we looking at? So, so, so I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, you, were so, you, you asked to have the job description. Yes. And the advertisement included. Mm hmm. And you are. Thank you. And so, I think at this point, I think the intention is now, right now, we have um, of, the four, of the four highway department employees we started the year with, one is retired, one is on medical leave. No. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. He's he. I'm. Uh, thank you for the correction. We have one who is um, showing up for work every single day. He is. Correct. I. Okay. I'm. I'm happy to hear that. I was not. I was. I was under a different impression. Good. And so we have. Uh, so we have. One who's retired, one who's resigned, and we have two employees coming in every day. Is that correct? That is correct. Excellent. Well, that's good because I was worried we only had one showing up every day. All right. So at least somebody can wave the trucks away when they're filling potholes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I believe the, uh, and I believe one of them is the one of them is a new hire, and the other one has uh, significant experience. He's a new hire from another town. He had, he had experience from another town. He had come to us. Okay, he's, he's, okay. Shows how much I know. I reviewed Good. the superintendent mm -hmm. um, job description. Mm -hmm. And it has a couple of inconsistencies in it. Let's oh, start there. You might want to address those. In chapter one, or paragraph one, the third line down, it says he's a non-administrative worker. And then it proceeds to list multiple administrative, administrative functions. So that may need to come up. The essential functions include trade maintenance. Is that something that you want to leave then? Since specific licenses are required to <coughs> Yeah, I care for trees at this point in time. I don't know what they were when this was written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say I would put a phrase at the bottom that they may from time to time provide supporting activities to the tree warden. That's where I was thinking to go. Just be to it. I think it. I think it should be in there, but not necessarily as one of their primary duties. But they do play a supporting role. Yes, in, absolutely. In, in, in tree maintenance. So. as a sign but calling it out specifically yes <laughs> mm -hmm. yes um, one thing I'm thinking of is that when we uh, when we post this we're probably going to have to have a salary range Kelly can you look into what the going rate for highway superintendent is for comparable towns I can do that 
as I know from, from our experience with the treasurer, if we don't post a rate or we post too low a rate, we're not going to get anyone's attention. And I didn't the state just pass a law about requiring like wages to be in job postings? Oh, that there be a, 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 a wage range Sal to be posted? Salary transparency, or was that down that, the I I don't, I understand what you're saying. I don't know if Massachusetts passed that law or not. It wouldn't surprise me. I listen to the radio in both states, so mm -hmm. sometimes I get confused. So if you continue down the page to the bottom line, it says responsible for maintenance of all department equipment, vehicle, machinery, performed routine maintenance. Is this personal? Does he have to be organic? Or do they oversee and if they have the skill, good work? Yeah, I would think we I might want to add it. I would say it ensures the performance of and then that can be either in-house or, okay. or vendor, right? So instead of performs, if you use ensure the performance of, that would. Um, I didn't know the all the different admin things, but if you take that first thing out, then that's a non-issue. Mm -hmm. There's a. a a feature here where it identifies available grants and prepares and submit grants applications, administers grants funds, receive and ensures compliance with grant requirements. You have a full time, well, you have a grant member that does all of this already. Do you want to bifurcate that position? Is this, this is not, since I've been here, would, been, been actually something that was followed, the grant writer was handled. Grants or the engineer for the project has overseen um, some portions of about the coordinates with appropriate entities to take advantage of grants and supports the submittal of grant applications with appropriate documentation and you know estimates or something. Do you want your highway sir, uh, superintendent? Doing grant searches and spending time on no. grant websites. That's no. what this is saying. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying in place of that, say, you know, uh, coordinates with grant authorities regarding available grants. So the, the grant, right? Or with, or just specifically say. And, the, yeah, every grant. now and then, you know, we'll get an email through a, a listserv for a specific department that says these grants are available. Yeah shoot that over to the grant writer right. and say, hey, these would fit our department really well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so coordinates yeah. with grant writer and supports the grant writing process. Because what I don't want is somebody to say, you know, the grant writer says, hey, here's a, here's a thing we can apply for for a million dollars. I don't have time for that, right? It needs to be in the job description to support the process, even right. if they're not responsible for the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the next under minimum competencies, You have the third bullet is basically they need a certain to be a certified procurement officer. Say that. Which one's this? Which bullet? The third bullet under minimum competencies. The thorough knowledge of laws, rules, and regulations. Yes, related to road projects, and this is that's fine, right up to that point including design selection, contract bidding, awards, and project management. Now, understanding that is, is super, but expecting them to have a procurement certificate might be a reach, because this is what you need to have as procurement certificate. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Lindsay just became a certified procurement officer. Yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah. So do we just want to change that to familiar, add in a uh, familiar? I'm just pointing it out. You can leave it in, you can change it. I'm just pointing it out to you that, yeah. that it is a, is a high. Um, it's a high bar. It's a high bar for such a small so, town, so, so a small can, town. Can, can, we, can we split it out to minimum competencies and then like um, nice additional, to have additional credential? you know, additional recommended credentials or something sure. along those lines. Because if this is a minimum competency, yeah. I, I think, it's a I think, requirement. Right, I, I, I understand that, job. right? So, because I think it probably needs to be split out what's required and then what would, what's a, like, preferential yeah. type. I didn't see anything else in there that, in that, on that page. 
um, that would be an issue as far as the requirements. And then you have your education and experience requirements. Um, if you go down to possession of a valid voicer and voicing engineer's license with a minimum of A, 1C, 1B, 2B, and 4A. 4A has been discontinued by the state. Now, in order to have any full qualification, you have to fall with them. Which that was a blanket one that covered all of the other. So, the class four license, which is what this covered, covers drill rigs, pipeline side booms, concrete pumps, catch basin cleaners, sign hangers, and specialty side boom mowers. So, this prior 4A would be all of these fours now. I do want to specify that. Certainly. That's off the deal on the website. So you can see, I wanted you to see what these letters represented, which is why I printed it. But I don't think we have a drill rig, a pipeline side boom, a concrete pump. We do have a catch basin cleaner. We do have specialty side boom mowers. So it's, it's just something to bring up to date in the, in the description. So you're saying that basically the 4A used to be every all the other 4s? Correct. Okay. And now they've broken out. Now they, they don't have a catch-all. you got to get each one individually. Right. Okay. And you have to get continuing education on each one of them individually. Before you could get continuing education on your 4A that may have covered one, may have covered the other the next year, and so mm -hmm. on, but no. And, and, and I think one of the things to do is also is that someone may not have all of the hoisting licenses and I think it just or be willing it, it should be phrased as or be willing to acquire within some period of time okay. yeah, in, the end, in the end or yeah. in the job description um, probably both They need to have a valid hoisting. Mm. We just in, in the, I mean, how detailed is the ad going to be? The ad could be saying that they're hoisting. Yeah, the ad links to the job description, right. to your actual job requirements. Right. And yeah. that's what I'm saying. Is yeah, like, I don't so think we have to get into it much in the ad. The, the job, they'll look at the job requirement and say, how do I line up? And we make sure that the necessary yeah. details there, that, that this is what we expect them to have. If and we're willing to work with them if they're if they have some yeah, it's something always like, up that's to us what whether to, to, to waive it. Yeah. Okay. Um, were there any other things that you saw that would be potential? Um, the work schedule is seven a.m. to three p.m. It doesn't say how many days, how many hours. You know it's over four because of overtime. Um, for certain seasons and, and in certain situations, right? right. So, so if there's torrential downpours and things are flooded, somebody's coming in and helping uh, water roads and so on. So that right. might need to be tightened up a little so, bit. So maybe put work schedule, like put core hours of seven to three on weekdays, mm -hmm. uh, but- So this know, is Monday through Friday. Right, but currently they were on a four day schedule. Mm -hmm. I don't know when they shift back to the go to five eights instead of four tens. Yeah. In, in here, I think we could just say that, indicate that winter is seven to three, five days a week, and summer is six to four, whatever their specific hours are, four days a week. When they change, we don't put in the job description. That's more detail than I think is needed. I'm just pointing out that it doesn't say how many hours a week it is. It just says, this could be seven days a week. It doesn't okay. say. Um, it's just an inconsistency. Yeah, okay, then, then we, we could say it's like work is four days a week. Um, we well, I, would, I would put the work. I, I think the work schedule is is generally forty hours a week. Some some overtime required, you know, depending on, yeah. uh, you know, depending on 
uh, events and conditions, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah, any, and, anyone and then, applying to this job knows that yeah. floods, the well, cash well, basis floods. She does know that. that. <laughs> Do you want the job to be hourly or salary? This does not say that either. So that's something. That's, that a, that's an important discussion, actually. It is a very important discussion, but that is, that is just something I know that you want to do for job. Historically speaking, it's been out correct? Yes. Yes, it, it, I, would, I, would, I would think it would be hard for us to find somebody who would be willing to do it salary for the salary. If you look at the total wage right. mm -hmm. um, for the year, it includes a lot of time because of storms right. and weather events, and rightfully so. So you need to just cut that. Right. Yeah. So, so you have your resignation. Um, it, we received an email from the town clerk asking the board to consider putting together a hiring committee. Um, you have the option of discussing an interim to give you time to get a hiring committee and correct fit for the town for the long run. Um, so those are just certain options you have. Okay. I mean, I, th I think the, the more immediate concern is an interim superintendent, but we do want to make sure we get moving on hiring someone on a permanent basis. So what are our options for an interim? Could you the only name any more of a question than that? Because it's very open-ended. Uh, oh, that was intentionally open-ended. <laughs> and I'm intentionally narrow. <laughs> 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 yeah. You can't blame me for trying. <laughs> it was a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, and it's interesting because we're we're in a particularly interesting bind because I think historically, in the last time we were without a superintendent, we had some folks step out and provided the individual who was who was acting as senior with a, a, a nominal stipend for covering as interim superintendent. Do does either of our employees really have the experience to even consider that? That is not something that I could um, comment on because I don't know what their experience is. I, I know that I've heard very good things about Mike having a lot of technical knowledge mm -hmm. and, and having stepped up and assisted when Ryan has been out and when he has been um, on vacation or has for is whatever that, reason wasn't available and, and Mike was the one who came and said, all right, this is what needs to be done and, and so on. So definitely an option um, for you to consider. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you want to talk to him about? Uh, to Ryan? No, to Mike. Ryan. Okay. I, 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 Ryan doesn't get it Ryan doesn't get a conversation in this one. All right. Necessarily. I mean you could talk to Ryan about it, but Okay. I mean, it's I I I, th I think it I think it, it, it bears investigation that we so should ask or we should con we should consider. It's something to think about. Um, the technical aspects of doing the work do not equate to the copious amount of administrative no, absolutely um, involvement that the, that the highway superintendent has. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the current administrative assistant has done a phenomenal job of learning the workings and maybe somebody you want to consider to take on as on a temporary basis filling the administrative paperwork. Well and that's and that's how we did it. That's how we did it last time um, actually was we had we had uh, Donald stand up as basically being like a foreman prior to having a foreman role. Mm -hmm. And we had um, uh, Cindy Thompson um, 
basically do all the administrative stuff associated with keeping the highway. The difference here is that here's a lot of But the, that's the challenge with both of them. Yeah. So it, it could be, it could work. I don't know. That's not your fault. I don't know if it's going to work. Well, it's, it's not the only option. No, there, I don't. Um, we could reach out to the uh, VA and see if there are any civil engineers who want a part-time gig and might want to be an intro. Which is a shot in the dark, but civil engineers know how to build roads. So oh, you've got a retired vet or a vet who's just <coughs> off, off duty or, or a, a reserve. Person. person who's looking for a part time or you know an interim, an interim gig, yeah, transition. something to transition them. It's a, it's a shot. I'm, I'm grasping it. That I people have thrown ideas at me, and I'm giving you the ones that think are viable. You also might be able to reach out to Skillbridge, actually. Is uh, mm -hmm. Skillbridge is the folks that, and this is like the really good gig, and I don't know if they'll, I don't know if they'll do it for municipalities, but they'll actually pay the service members' wages for their last like three to six months prior to their retirement, in like the equivalent of an internship job, to get them, and and, and they prefer that you have a position that could be filled by that person in the future. So it's almost like getting an opportunity to test drive somebody as an interim, and then if they met all the qualifications and turned out to be a good fit, then you could then hire them at the end of their like government-funded um, period with you. Um, it's called Skill Bridge. Okay. It's it's uh, and they have people that are like you know I don't know if. Folks are available fast enough. I don't know what the lead time is. I think usually it's like one to three months, so it might not be quick enough for us. Uh, but that might be an option. Um, we could post both for an interim and for, uh, you know, I, I, I think what we want to do is get this up sooner rather than later, but also have it posted both as an interim and as a um, permanent. Another option is to um, hire a company that would do all of this. Right. To contract out. To contract it out. That it would be it would be an outside company that would look at everything from a third party neutral perspective. You mean like a recruiting company to find somebody? Yes. Okay. There are recruiting companies out there that work specifically with municipality supervisory positions. Right. So that's another option that we could use. And they would then get the resumes and screen them and do the background checks and do all of the. Um, I'd, I'd actually, that point, I would they actually. present to the board a group or a, a number of. Applicants that suit. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I would prefer that to a, a, a hiring committee because they, those hiring committees get so political and so, and a lot of times are not necessarily focused on the what's the good of the town, it's the, you know, what's my agenda. Mm -hmm. um, even when people are, are, are doing it with good intentions, there always seems to be that skewing that goes on. No, but it does cost money. Yeah, about how, um, about how much would that cost? I have absolutely no idea. Typically, well, let's investigate. It. Typically, imagine. typically it's seventeen percent of whatever the hiring salary is going to be of okay. the person that they're hiring. Typically, at mm -hmm. least, at least if it's not, I don't know for the municipal one special specializing in municipalities. I can tell you that's usually the head undergoing rate for corporate stuff. Yeah, okay. seventeen percent or so. Okay. Yeah, somewhere in that, somewhere in that. But to a certain extent, if, if that, it's, if that if that reduces our transition time and allows us to avoid problems that would happen if we if it took us longer to fill the position, it might it could be money well spent or it could be money poorly spent. I don't know. It's it's hard so, to prove something didn't happen. So and and, and honestly, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're even interested in it, but I could reach out to Orion that does like senior 
NCO and junior military officer type placements and see yeah. if well, they, the reason if I, they I won't, think but they won't have the municipal military. experience. So the reason I'm thinking military is because this is basically a very technical road construction yeah. oriented position and we may be able to find an interim who has excellent technical skills, skills. In, and experience. Right. To, to, to fill the spot until you find a person that you want to, to, to fill, take fill the job. Yeah. You don't still have any phone of friends with the uh, National Guard? You don't have any phone of friends still with the National Guards, do you? <laughs> I know you've been out a long time. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't live locally. Yeah, that's the problem. Is there's not a lot this, in this area. I mean, it almost seems like we need a little bit of an above, all of the above approach. Like, I mean, Ryan, Ryan's resignation is effective the end of next week. Yeah. So we need, it's like, so we need to think of what and are we going to do. you got that list you asked for immediately. I want to point that out. Yes, he, he turned that around very quickly. Yes, he did. And so my thought is that um, it's like, so we, we want to make sure that we have a plan in place for then. It's like for um, October 16th, or technically 5, 5 p.m. October 12th. So I, when, he's, I, when he's done, because that weekend we're, we're going to need we're going to need something in place on the 12th when he's done or when it, whenever he's done. You're not going to have something in place in, in five days. No, but my thought is, yeah, but <laughs> I, but my point is, if we if we like. If, if we, but in that time, we can start looking into a, just saying it's like, as a temporary stopgap measure, mm -hmm. we could appoint, it's like, we can investigate a, appointing someone to be a technical lead on call and seeing if Lindsay can take on more of the administrative task while we find and something else. Consider all the things that I told you, don't, unless, you, unless it's your intention to Pick one of the options. No, 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 no. My intention is that, like, we we do that until say four weeks down the line when we can bring in a an interim, or if it's six weeks. But the thought is that, I, I my concern is that if we say okay, we're going to look for an interim, and let's say it takes six weeks, mm -hmm. there's a period of time before the interim comes in. How's it going to work? And so we need to we need to look at the whole calendar and say. Is it okay? Or at maybe maybe yeah, interim process. You could put the interim. What's that? This is not a permanent hire. This is an interim. Yes. Can I suggest something? Sure. Yeah. It, it's um. Would you guys consider offering Ryan, asking Ryan if he stay longer so we find a replacement and even offering him a a bonus for doing that? Give us more time to find a replacement. I didn't consider that because I, the impression I get is that, and, and I could be wrong, is that um, Ryan has uh, found an opportunity he considers better, and, and and therefore I don't think he's going to be available to stay on. And so and so that and so that's why I didn't think of it, Chris. Okay. So. Thoughts. So, I mean, my th my thinking is that I think it makes sense to I, I like I like the idea of looking for an interim um, okay, so, supervisor. So let's let's start with the, the let's go from the most tactical to the most to, to the longest term. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, which of us needs to go down to the highway, go over to laundry list with Ryan? sit down and talk to the three remaining employees down there and figure out if we don't have somebody in place as a formal interim, what happens on, let's call it October um, 15th. Do you want to do that or should I do that? I'll do that. Okay. All right. So you have the sit down with the remaining employees. Yep. I'll sit down with the laundry list. Mm -hmm. Understand what 
and, and frankly, what, you know, and while, and, and despite my somewhat flip comment about it, you know, if Brian wants to be involved in that process, fine, so we can give you the additional details associated with that list, right? And you come up with the, what the, the two to four weeks after he leaves look like, because there's a lot of stuff on that list that said it had to be done in the next four to eight weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think while we have him in the seat, you know, before the actual transition occurs, at a very minimum, we need that four to eight weeks planned, assuming we can't find somebody to be in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And depending on the scope of your findings there, do we know what type of companies would offer the type of interim service that one of those companies would provide, potentially to cover that work? Yeah, so we'd have to reach out to, you say, Skillbridge, and what was the other one you said? Orion. Orion. Yeah. Orion haunts me all the time because they placed me a couple of times, so. Well, then you've got a relationship. I have a relationship. I, 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 will do the, I will do the outreach to Orion. In fact, if you want, I can, I can also probably reach out to Skillbridge. That would be huge. I can take care of that. Huge. That would be so, huge because the more we split this up, load up, the more likely it will come together right. in, a, in a shorter period of time. Because I mean, if, if nothing else, we have to, it's like I know Ryan probably signs time cards for them. We have to figure out who's going to sign time cards. Yeah, well, I mean, Lindsay, I, I mean, those things are typically, like, those things are the ones that would, and, and you do need to sit down and, like, call all that stuff out, but, like, Lindsay would typically Lindsay do that. Lindsay actually does the mission to sign for the invoices. Yeah. Okay. And then she's, because when Ryan is out, mm -hmm. but I'll double check. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and, and that's... Just making sure that gets handled. Sure I was going to say, yeah, people need to people need to get paid. They get very cranky when that happens. When that doesn't happen. Now, is is Donald formally retired now? The eleventh, he left. The eleventh, he left. I knew it was like um, last. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's a question, and that might be one of the first people I would go to as like an interim, even though it would be more like a foreman rather than superintendent. Is that? They can work even after he retires. They can. Do they have to? Do they have a waiting they period? They have to have a waiting period. They have a gap before okay. they can start to collect. What's the gap? I, I don't know what the gap is, but I know that there is a gap. Yeah. I think I want to say it's thirty days, but it may be longer. It might be ninety or, or six yeah. months even. Thirty sounds a little short, but. But you never know. Yeah, no, I, it, it could be 30. I'm not saying it's not. It just strikes me. Can we me check short. into that and yeah. just like how long the wait is? Because I don't know that he'd want the headaches long term, but he might He might be open to a little extra money um, as an interim. Okay, not going to happen. What's that? It won't happen. Okay. Yeah. Not with Donald. If he says no, he says no. That's worth asking him. But, yeah. at, least, at least let him know we talk of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And so we've got the, so we've got the, so we're looking for an interim. We need, we, so we I would. We need to get the posting out as fast yes. as possible for the, just the. Yeah, the, for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the permanent. Because it, unless you think we should wait on either an organization or a, a hiring committee. I'm, I'm not you a fan of a hiring them, committee you, for. You can know. bring whomever on. Um, you've got your job description, you've got the, the hours and the, and the job, so... The posting could go out even if we want to go out on Monday. Mm -hmm. and no, Tuesday is Monday is a holiday. Right. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. um, it does need to be put in the paper. Uh, I guess it's part of the hiring by law. Yep. Yeah. So, so let's so go ahead and plan to get that out as soon as possible, regardless of if we're eventually going to get some extra, yeah. Yeah. extra help, right, to find, to find yeah. or fill the position. Do we, do we need to vote to amend this, the job description, based on Kelly's um, observations, or can we just... And the language that that provided, I just pointed it out, but pro that provided uh, corrected language. Okay. Or so, so I'll okay, make so a vote. I, I'll, well, I'll, I'll do this. I'll make a motion that we um, uh, adjust the job position as discussed and as annotated uh, right. during the discussion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
So you want to advertise the permanent one, not the interim. So I think what we want to do is in the paper advertise the permanent one. On our website, do we want to advertise for both a permanent and an interim? I think that would probably be the best approach, yeah. And, and just sense? note that the interim is uh, indefinite until a permanent is brought on? Yeah. And uh, my thought is that if we like the interim and they want to go permanent, that's we're certainly well, open to that. And, and one of the things that, like, it, and, and it's not uncommon. It doesn't right? preclude them from applying for the position. Right, yes. and I, but I, it's good to state that in the, in, it's yeah. good to state that in the posting, right? That that application as application and fulfilling the role of interim will not will not preclude uh, somebody from. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Will not will not preclude someone from applying for being appointed to the permanent highway superintendent position. So, Kelly, would you mind looking into the professional municipal headhunters? I'd be happy to do that. I know of two particular um, companies off the top of my head, so I'll reach out to them and see if there's anyone else in the industry and get a feeling for what they need from us and what the what the timeline is. Okay. The time frame is. Yeah. Yeah. But and, and I'm just it's I mean, we certainly can discuss it further, but I will just tell you I'm not a fan of the citizen run hiring committees. Mm -hmm. For interview process, I think one of the things I would like to do, though, is include Dennis or somebody from the um, water department as part of the You should interview. include the water department and you should include the cemetery department because there's a big cemetery project that's going to be going on. And, and they're, they interact with the highway department a lot, so that's it's, it's important to have and the key players involved. And I think Dennis has a lot of experience that would um, assist us in identifying a good candidate. I don't disagree with that. So, okay. Is there anything else we need to talk about relative to this topic? Nothing I can think of. Okay. Good. All right, we have a plan of action. We have, okay, so we have a posting that's going to go up for permanent. We have a plan of action for looking for an interim. I kind of like the idea of you doing the posting for both because the, we don't want to find out that there's some technical aspect of the bylaw that we didn't post for the interim. That's a good point. Higher, Ooh. even though it's temporary, we yep. want to follow the bylaw. You know, that's a good point. Yeah. So, 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 you know, and it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a couple hundred bucks extra, but it's money well spent. So let's yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so. The same job posting will go up as a uh, permanent highway superintendent and will also post for a uh, for an, an interim. In, for an interim. Um, the interim will not, uh, uh, the candidate hired for the interim will, uh, that position will not preclude them from applying for the permanent position. Okay. And, and on the most immediate step, I will go down and uh, talk, I will be talking to the uh, people in the highway department on, on Monday or Tuesday. It's like, I'll try and see if I can set something up for Monday, but just because they don't come in until Monday morning. It's like, but it's Columbus Day. Do they have oh, holiday? Oh, yeah, Columbus. It's yes, Monday, it is. so it's it might not. It might not be until Wednesday then. A weather yeah, it'll be. Uh, it'll so they'll get my they'll get my request on Tuesday, and if they're available Tuesday, that then I'll make the time. If they're not available until Wednesday, I'll come down on Wednesday. But and then just uh, talk to them about the uh, transition, what needs to be done, and understand how we can. Make things work until an interim uh, supervisor is there. We also have the added um, complication that that they are a person short in the highway department, and besides the retiree, no we need to hire. That if they were attempting to sell, we need to be replaced on. And we don't want to. And honestly, we don't want to wait until we have a highway superintendent to get no, us. No, so that's out. ongoing as well. Just, are, those, are those are those already posted? posted? Yeah, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. Our um, resumes coming in. They all. are, but my understanding is that they. I haven't seen them, but that the people applying are not qualified. And if we want to qualify people, 
we're going to need the funding to send them to school. Right. So. Uh, Don, uh, you have you talking about interim, which I think is a smart move. I, I, do you have a time frame? I think you need to give somebody a time frame of what interim is. Is it thirty days? Is it ninety days? I think it's up to six months. I think that's reasonable. It's like it, mm -hmm. with the uh, up to six. Uh, I've expect seen interim town administrators stay for years. But but we but I, I think the idea is to uh, is to set the expectation yeah. and and to say it's Do like for, for, and for, and, revisit, or yeah. until someone is hired yeah. or revisit yeah. and that, and yeah. that uh, uh, with the possibility of extension. Well, my thought was that if you give thirty days and you don't find somebody, then you do a thirty days, you do another thirty days. It may take you six months to find somebody. Yeah, no, I, well, I, I think I think for this it's so, that's right. Yeah, is that I I would say that we're we would say that we would be looking to bring someone on for um, for up to six months, um, and then revisit at the end. Yeah, yeah. revisit at the end if, with, if necessary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but with the end, with the understanding with, that with like, potential to extend it if the yeah. position is still. Yeah. Open. Conversely, if we if we hire some, if we um, when we hire a permanent candidate, the interim is, we're done with the interim. Yeah. It's like, and when, was, and when well, someone comes on, we get to die, even though, even though you have an idea that you may not be interested, we would like to reach out to them and ask if he would like to. It was my bad idea, so I'll ask him. <laughs> Why don't you talk to Mike and have him step up to do the day-to-day -day operations? Well, that's, have, part, that's you know, part of the discussion that... Um, yeah. That Tom's going to have. Yeah, that was my point. first suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the that that's the. So here's the thing. That discussion is going to happen anyway. Okay. Now, with regards to the interim position, um, I don't know that Mike's a supervisor kind of guy. Might be interested in the opportunity. Might not. Might have the right temperament for it. Might not. Might be a great fit. Might be a great fit. Might not. I I don't know. I honestly have had only limited interactions with Mike. Mm -hmm. So. I don't care about any. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, but that's part of what that discussion is going to be about the day to day until we either say, hey, yeah, he could be interim, or someone else can be interim, or we find somebody that actually can fill a role, so. Um, and I'll call Donnie. Don't you got part-timers down there, too? That can step up into the to help out more than they do now? Most of our part-timers have other part-time jobs, I think, that preclude them from expanding their hours, but we'd have to check. I, I suspect most of everybody that's working. I suspect if any of the seasonal or part-time employees wanted to step up, the uh, the open rec would be there. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, would apply, they would have applied for the open position. I, yeah. that, that's my suspicion is that. Pay the part -time. Mm -hmm. yeah, if they were interested, they already would have expressed that interest. But you never know. All right. All right. Yeah. So I think that's so permanent interim and the uh, and talking to the uh, the existing staff there. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Um, Kelly's gonna Kelly's gonna look into the um, to the recruiters. Beth's gonna contact Orion and Skillbridge. Yeah. And you're gonna talk to Don. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Karen's gonna get the and then Karen's gonna take care of the posting. Anything else? Other than I would. Then you need another to meet so that this doesn't remain open-ended. You want to wait two weeks to do this? No, let's go. What's the, uh, what do we need to cover before two weeks? Or just? No, we need to be on top of this. So, like, we need to get back together sometime next week after you've talked to the highway superintendent to see how comfortable you are with what the four to eight week plan is. Do we, is do we want to tack that on to the Thursday meeting? We have an executive session. I'm sorry? And tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you need to check the calendar to see if there is a Yeah, I prefer to do this in the evening. Okay. Okay, so that's fine. Um, because because I, I can't take that much time in the middle of the day. You've got, an, uh, you've got 60 minutes start to finish, and that's it. Okay. On Thursday. I'm sorry. That's, that's fine. I, I, just hope, I just hope it only come once, and I've, I've already, but I've already tacked on a, uh, a lunch and learn with Kathy about the grant process before our meeting. 
Thursday afternoon. Oh, okay. Well, it's just 30 minutes, but it's, it's oh, like, oh, it just, I just took that as the opportunity. Yeah, that's Thursday. Yeah, so next Thursday is open if you're interested. Mm -hmm. So Thursday evening? Uh, Thursday evening next week, yes. Uh, Karen, would you uh, reserve the room and schedule that meeting? Yeah. So that we can uh, discuss this we'll matter in session? Be uh, I mean, we can do a quick, hey, this is what we discovered, this is where we're at, yeah. what are the next steps? Yeah, yeah just yeah, keep yeah, it yeah, give us an open meeting in which to dis further discuss this matter and deal with anything that's come up, evaluate our situation. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be quick. Ms. Craig, can I ask something? Um, yes, Mr. Kelleher, what's up? Can I be yeah, included knowing you guys were ready to publicize the ad and I would put it up on our new town website for the newspaper? Um, Yes, Karen, can you make sure a copy of the job description gets yeah. to, gets to Chris? Yeah, shoot it out to Facebook, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's usually what we do anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right. Great. Thank you. I'll share it on LinkedIn. All right. And then uh, I... I've done that in the past. That's, that's uh, we've gotten some... Good, good applicants. Good applicants and some weird stuff in my own. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's you don't know what you get. Commute, I don't know if you want to come here. But, mm -hmm. All right. And then... Uh, was the data links. Oh dear, oh, that's funny. And, and then I, I think we'd be remiss if we did not uh, take this opportunity to thank Ryan for his service to the town Absolutely. over these four years. It's like, I know, it's like, it's like, what are we going to do? It's like, yeah, but we do want to thank him for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, wish, and wish him well in his, in his, next, in his next chapter. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I, I think we're done with this agenda item. And so, Medex signature. Um, so, is this a uh, Karen? Is this I'll an make a motion? I'll make a motion. It's not in place. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to accept the rates for the the uh, um, Medex insurance. Can I ask? Uh, do you have, need to take a vote to accept this resignation? No. Can they stop me from quitting? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we quit. We quit doing that. Acknowledge it. They can acknowledge it. Okay. And definitely say thank you and send a letter. Yeah. Saying thank you. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing they, they can't say. You know what? We're not accepting this. That's work. Sorry, you can't. So. Mm -hmm. I know it's it's not practice, but <laughs> if it's not necessary. Yeah. Yes. Um. Could we um? Let's see. Would it be appropriate for us to um, to announce this that he's resigning and wish him well, or is that just not done? I, I'm just, just what's, what's the practice? You just did that. That's that what you part. did. Okay, I, I was thinking something. I was thinking something more that people would see and be know about. It's like no one we watches. Have not done that we haven't done that historically. Okay, then, 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 then. Thank you. That's that's what I needed to know. If if there's not precedent for it, then I'm not going to start a precedent. So, and then um, we're just acknowledging what you know, health the church I was just thinking of a situation that happened in another town. Mm -hmm. We need to accept, vote to accept his resignation. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept uh, Brian's resignation. Uh, I will second the motion. All, all in favor who are not recusing themselves, please say aye. 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 All right. All right. Now, we're, so we're just. So I make a motion <laughs> for Tom to be able to sign for us to mm -hmm. accept the MedEx rates. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. That's uh, so. We're just. Are these in line with what we expected? Absolutely not. Not even close. And when I said, "What happens if they don't sign it?" They said, "We're raising them anyway." This is just acknowledging <laughs> that you've seen them. Uh huh. I mean, what are these health insurance? What is this health insurance? It's it's the retirement changes for the retirees. Oh. Oh, this is the retire. This is the retirement levy. Which line item in the budget does this come out of? Insurance. General insurance. <laughs> this is general insurance. Okay. I thought it was under. It's not under the health insurance. Health insurance is under general insurance. Oh, that's right. Okay. Oh, yeah. is general insurance a category? Or yes. It's insurance. A yeah, insurance and other. Um, and other. So we have a a, a workers' compensation line. And yes. We have a general insurance line which includes. Property and health. health. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, so this okay, so this is this isn't under the, the retirement assessment. This is under no, general insurance. No, this is not. Okay. This is this no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, this is not Worcester. This is not Worcester. This is not Worcester, this is not Worcester County retirement. Yeah, this is under health insurance. Okay, okay because the retirement assessment is full. So terminology yeah. matters. <laughs> we have 15 minutes until. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So we have a motion and a second. I ask some questions. All in favor of uh, confirming acceptance of the rates which we have no control over, please say aye. 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 Uh, aye. All right. And so, okay. I will sign. Community club request because that's Saturday. Yes. Okay. Um, can I have a uh, motion to take um, item number seven next, which is out of order? I have a motion to take item seven next. Sorry. All right. All in favor of taking it out of order, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kelly. And so, as we mentioned, the Apple Country Fair. Uh, let's see. So they're just asking us to um, prohibit street vendors from. Yeah. Uh, this is their. I guess. Yeah. This is the normal every year. Yes. Request. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I don't know. The airports, the bikes. Yeah, so, I, I, and I, I do want you to make note of one thing since the highway department's not in tomorrow, even though we didn't highlight this, is that Chief Martell did ask for the whacker to come up to the green on Friday. Yes, he, he, he preemptively made arrangements with the highway department to ensure the Apple Country Fair would run as you do. Okay, perfect. I just want to check. So, okay, and then. Um, what is the whacker? It's a little tiny forklift thingy that we have that has a whole bunch of different. It's the same thing that we use to like clear the sidewalks. Okay. And okay. All that. It's a great little like multi-purpose, slightly smaller, bigger than a bobcat sort of thing that we have. But it's, it's a bobcatty thing. It's a bobcatty thing. Okay. Thank you. That tells me what I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's all not right. a skid steer, but it's about the same size, and it's got a mm -hmm. bunch of attachments. Okay. So with, without this, a, a like a, a food truck that has a license in Brookfield would be able to pull up on the Apple Country Fair yes. and, and horn in on their on the that vendors who pay to be there. And dilute the profits for the remaining food vendors. Yes. Okay. In the interest of full disclosure, I don't think it precludes me from voting on this. I'm having a, a, a not-for-profit citizen organization is going to be set up on my lawn because they weren't allowed to pay for vendor space from the Apple Country Fair Committee. So, um, but I don't think that that qualifies under this because they're not a vendor. Okay. I, no, that is not a vendor. That's correct. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so I, let's see, so, I mean, I will take a motion that we um, prohibit um, all street vendors not associated with the uh, Apple Country Fair. Um, um, that we, we suspend, I'll, I'll give you a motion that we suspend you. the operation of any uh, vendor, food, like street vendor permits, inclusive of food permits of within the town of Brookfield along the area of the common for the day of the Apple Country Fair. Uh, she I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm making a motion that we suspend any uh, street vendor license not associated with the Apple Country Fair um, and, uh, for the day of the it says here, yeah. Yeah. Only, yeah. Yes, right. only yeah. we suspend. Yes. Do you want to suspend it for all the Brookfield? Or? Well, for the area of the common. Yeah, I know, but the, the, the request written down is all of Brookfield, which strikes me. I think it's the area of the common, because I, if somebody wants to do something out at Oak Home, I really well, no, don't care. Well, it says mm -hmm. on the common for the day. Yeah, yeah. The on the common for the day in the request. Oh, the, uh, it's at the end. That's yeah. I missed that part. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I'm not sure that we can suspend bicycles and skateboards. In the common, you can. Okay. Yeah. All right, so then I'll make a discreet motion for to suspend the usage of bicycles and skateboards on the okay. common. Uh, well, we have two motions that... So can, can we go with the motion about the um, vendors first? Sure. All right. Can I get a second? Sorry, man. All right. All in favor of um, uh, preventing vendors not associated with the Apple Country Fair from operating in the area of the common on Saturday, October 7th, please say aye. 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 All right. And the other motion? The other motion is that we suspend the use of bicycles and skateboards on the common on October 7th for the Apple Country Fair. All right. Second. 
All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 And then road closures, I don't think we need to approve that. And the uh, WACA, we don't need to approve that. No. And we announced that. Did we do everything they asked us to do? It appears so that So since we have Mary Lou in the room, can we just I keep going with eight? I was just going to say that. Can, can we take the next one on the board? Yeah, I make a motion um, that we this, take, continue on with eight. Continue with um, sure. Um, I have. <laughs> you um, got a second. You've got a motion. A okay, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, uh, all in favor of going out of order with the, taking number eight next, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All right, uh, let's see. So, uh, I think we just need, I don't think there's anything for us to do except, yay, Mary Lou. So, can I get a motion to that effect? <laughs> uh, I make a motion to acknowledge Mary Lou Knight as appointed by the Board of Trustees to serve on the Board of Trustees for uh, the Library Board of Trustees. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. The library trustees. Yeah. One second. All right, all in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Mary Lou. All right, and so now that brings us to six, sign board on the common. So um, I've been approached by, a, uh, I've been approached um, diligently by a citizen about the uh, sign board on the northwest corner of the common, diagonally across from the library. Um, the, he, he, can, he reports it as an eyesore. Um, and so the, uh, the question becomes, do we have a use for it? Do we have a need for it? Or is it an ISO that we want to take down? Since it's on the common, that's within our purview. And Beth, it's probably with you. You can probably see it from your front window. I can. What's your opinion of it? My opinion of it is if we made better use of it, it would be perfectly fine. But mm -hmm. I don't think that we actually leverage it for what it's intended for, which is to inform folks that are driving by about what's going on in town. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I mean, that's fine. I, to my mind, I, I, I'm inclined to announce our intention and then to uh, take a final vote on this in two weeks. And that why don't we hold a public hearing and see what what intention? <laughs> What's your intention? <laughs> that's fair enough. Well, I mean, so, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm getting ahead saying, of myself, so but our, so, so, no, I know, so, I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm presuming that, okay, so, in so the presumption that it? it's like, I don't know. So, so, who, it, so I, although I, think, well, I think Mr. Keller well, first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, the cultural council used to list like all of the, all of the, like, like during the, the month that we have the bands, like the concerts on the, on the common, they typically, they used to list that there. Yes. Um, we used to actually post when we had elections or other events coming up on there, um, or they'd roll out the other sign, right? Um, so I think the question is, is if it's gonna be there, let's use it. If we're not gonna use it, then we take it down. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to preclude something from going back up. Right. It's just the time, the effort and expense of putting something back up. Put it up, take it's it like down, my thought, it up. My thought is that if we're- Well, we were given the sign by the school with the letters. Right. That they used to have prior to getting a new one that's in the basement that has not been put up yet. Right. You want usable outside sign. Right. That one in the basement if you want to put it up. So maybe we replace, so maybe replace the, the one that's out there with one with movable letters that we can actually put up information on? Yeah, I'm not sure how well that's gonna play with the uh, with the petitioning citizen and the historical commission. But we can, but that doesn't mean we can't do it. What is the historical commission? What is their interaction? Their, their, um, uh, my, my projection is that they will feel that it is a, um, uh, it doesn't fit in with the historic well, well, character of the comic. Let's but, do this. But, but, let's, uh, let's, I, think, let's, I think a hearing makes let's, sense. Let's, let's, let's do this. One of two things, or, or both of them, okay? Either do a public hearing, or let's send out to all of the departments and committees, not just the department heads, but the committees, to say, do we need to sign? What should we be using it for? And if we're not going to use it, should we take it down? And get input from the committee. Let's at least get input from the committee chairs and the the department heads. Because, you know, I do feel like we don't use it much, but I don't know that it necessarily needs to come down. I think it's a missed opportunity, personally. Mm -hmm. But and then as part of that communication out, see if they think that a movable letter sign like what we had from the school would actually work better there. 
-hmm. And then if the historical committee wants to say, oh, no, don't do that, then they can let us know that at mm -hmm. that point in time when we solicit input. And do you want to do a public hearing or? I mean, I was being kind of flipped because I figured that's a decision. <laughs> Putting the sign up or taking it down is one I think we, we probably could make on our own, mm -hmm. or on our own but I think well, we let's, want to let's, 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 let's see what the department heads and committees say back. Okay. And then we can take, we can take it from there. All right, I don't think we need a vote for that. And so. Five minutes. I'll make a motion yes. to s approve the select board minutes of 919, 522 18, 831 23, and um, 919 23 and 921 23. Second. All right, uh, all in favor of approving the uh, minutes so listed, please say aye. 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 All right, and acknowledge the uh, fire department reports. I'm going to make a motion that we acknowledge the receipt of the fire department reports. And do you have any of the great anniversaries on there that we can announce? Because I don't have a copy with me. Um, let's let me find them. Reports. Board of Trustees. It's in the fold of that says, um, I want to the question of the department. What is Reports minutes of the departments. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Anniversaries, none for July. For August, we have um, Lieutenant Jeff White, um, 22 years, uh, Firefighter Sean Daniels, three years, and Firefighter Stacy Courtney, one year in, this, in the August report. Awesome. Yes. All right. Uh, we, I heard a motion to accept the report. Was there a second? Second. All right, thank you. All in favor of accepting the uh, fire department report, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And that is, uh, let's see, motion support. Oh, no, like <laughs> correspondence. <laughs> Disney Channel updates. Uh, correspondence. Oh, Almost done. Almost done. Yeah. And then I actually have, have a motion. I actually Sir, are you supposed to stop what you're doing and address the motion? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, could you withdraw a motion for just a moment? While I would draw the motion. While I, while I handle correspondence. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. And Charter is saying, hey, we worked things out with Disney. We don't know how much, they don't tell us how much money it's going to cost them, but we know it's going to cost us. And all the Disney properties are back on cable TV. Yay. Hooray. Yay. All right, Beth, hit us. Over. All right. Oh, I do have one, I do have one other item. It's, a, it's actually correspondence. I received a contact, and we can put it on an agenda for another day, but is there any way for us to, um, I got a communication from a citizen asking if there's a way for us to get the state to actually uh, mow the area that is the sidewalk, like um, in front of the state, basically from around where the state troopers are down to clam box because you can't hardly walk in that area the, the state's not really maintained in that area mm -hmm. to see if we can uh, I would have asked the highway superintendent but I heard about it mm -hmm. after it probably isn't his concern so much anymore and it's yes. one of those areas that we probably shouldn't be maintaining but the state is su probably supposed to mm -hmm. so I don't know if we have a way to You've had good success with Men's DOT to get that pothole repaired. So maybe you could reach out to your contact. Yeah. So. Um, but that's it. We've got some personal correspondence from somebody about it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So all credits are DOT. All right. Excellent. Thank you. And then a uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Yeah, All right. To a point of order, did you guys do number nine or did I miss that? Uh, number did nine. Uh, we did. Board? Yes, we yeah. approved the select board yeah, minutes. The beginning. Okay. That we, that we did it in I order. I did it so fast you didn't hear me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so we have a motion to adjourn and seconded. Uh, I declare the meeting adjourned at 8.14. One minute to go under our limit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody.